Alright, Medic's here again. This is uh, the Exodus of the Queen, a level 51 plus dungeon and rift. I have discovered, woefully sad, that there are no real dungeon walkthroughs uh, for rift uh, on YouTube. The first few dungeons coming up aren't so bad, but boy, the level 50 plus dungeons are difficult. So I'm going to try to put together a few walkthroughs for everybody, uh, see if they help anyone. Okay, so the first boss. Now, Mattel the Dungeon, I'm sorry, for anybody who has never watched my channel before, this is going to be from a healer's perspective. I do apologize, I can't give you tanking tips or DPS tips, I can only do the healer's tips. So the first boss, the most important thing is to remove the curse from the tank. He'll get a curse, you need to remove it. I failed to do this initially um, with this tank, but he was a level 60 tank, I was level 51. Uh, and nobody's really telling me what to do. So, I kind of didn't know this dungeon very well at the time, so that's why I'm doing these videos now. So you got to remove the curse. If you can throw some DPS up, that's great, but really focus on the healing. Uh, because it, after the first, there's like two bosses in this fight. After the first mechanical boss dies, and the wind elemental will appear. And that wind elemental is going to put out massive AoE damage, which requires uh, a lot of AoE heals, which I at the time do not have. Um, much like a Disc Priest in World of Warcraft, I'm more dependent on shielding people from damage than actual direct healing. So I can throw up a series of shields and then throw some direct heals to mitigate damage. And uh, it's a little bit more difficult. I'm used to uh, playing a Druid in Warcraft and doing AoE heals and a lot of hot healing or heal over time heals. So um, just be aware of the massive damage going out if you don't have an AoE heal at this time. Uh, get prepared at the second phase of this fight to really really heal heavy and to keep everybody up and going The second boss is interesting to say the least. One, the tank will need to tank the boss towards the center but not quite in the circle unless the tank is planning on doing the dual sequence with the boss, but we'll get to that phase here in a moment. So the tank is going to run and pull the boss. All right, The boss, and for as a healer, if you can shield the tank as he's going in because there's going to be massive damage up front, that's great. If not, there's going to be some heavy damage, so get ready for that. Uh, next the boss is going to start whipping out axes and they're going to start swirling around in the air. The axes, axes excuse me, can be easily dodged and I believe they are to be targeted by DPS and destroyed. A lot of times they don't do it, they just keep the focus on the boss um, and depend on the healer to keep them alive. So from a healer's perspective, if you can target the axes and kill them, great. Um, I, if the healer is undergeared, please do that because the, it's the only way to really get the healer through this fight without a massive wipe. Then, um, Phase two of the fight, the boss is going to challenge somebody to a duel, run to the center of the room. Who's ever in the center of the room with the boss will be the one who will have to duel the boss. And the person dueling the boss will no longer be able to be healed by the healer. A person in a group will be selected with a, uh, a, a, an ability to heal the person fighting the boss. It's not always the healer that gets that ability. So it'll pop up on the lower center part of your screen to do that. Uh, so about halfway through the dual sequence, run up, target the uh, tank or whoever is fighting the boss, and cast that little hot heal on them so they can survive the rest of the fight. In the meantime, during the duel, a bunch of ads will come out, and we're responsible for downing the ads. And once all the ads are done, then the duel finishes in the center, then the fight is over. It's not a very difficult fight. It can be somewhat healing intensive if people aren't dodging the axes, because they can take you down to about half health, especially if you're undergeared. So uh, be uh, mindful of that. And um, that's it with this fight. It's pretty close to a tank and spank as the rest of this dungeon gets.
Okay, so I didn't get to record the entire fight of the third boss. So I'm going to make this quick and simple since this section isn't very long. Um, the boss is gonna has an ability. He's going to knock everybody back. Everybody run to the middle uh, by the boss into the purple circle. And he's going to knock you back again. You're going to run back to the middle again. After the second knockback, you need to be out of line inside of the boss. So you need to run behind one of the bookcases. So when he does this massive AoE thing, you're not caught in it and you will not die. It's a one-shot. If you don't run to the boss, and it's a one-shot if you don't get behind a bookcase. Um, the mechanic of the fight is really easy, but we s a lot of people, a lot of groups seem to fail at this fight pretty regularly. So, um, again, run twice, then once behind the bookcase, and just keep DPSing. That's all there is to it. Alright, this last fight is long and drawn out, and it is probably the most difficult fight in this dungeon. So be warned, it's healing intensive, it's DPS intensive, it's tank intensive. Um, if there is a support person in the group, and the healer is under geared, please get into support mode, and uh, help with the uh, healing in this one. It's going to have a lot of AoE damage, as well as direct healing. Uh, so if you're a support, uh, bard, chloromancer, whatever, uh, be ready, please. It would really benefit the group in the end, anyway. So, there's two phases to this fight. In the first phase, um, the boss is going to summon a bunch of adds, and the adds need to be downed. Sounds simple, but the adds are pretty frequent and pretty heavy. You're going to get every, each person will get a turn with this ability. I don't know exactly what it's called, but you'll see in the bottom of your screen when it pops up in little parentheses. Um, and you can one-shot all the adds at one time. So let the tank gather all the adds. If the ability pops up below you, run, knock all the adds down and kill them. And it makes this sequence go by fairly quick. Healers just be on your toe because um, they don't have an aggro table at the beginning. So they might come straight at different characters throughout the game. Excuse me. So be prepared for that. After that, then the second phase of the fight begins. There's going to be different methodology throughout this, and they usually tell the range to run up on top of one of these icebergs and range from there. And uh, the DPS, you know, melee stay behind the boss, not in front. And uh, tank, obviously, in front of the boss. Again, tank's going to take a lot of damage. He'll be prepared for that. Uh, one of the first abilities this, this, this uh, boss will have, he's going to whip an axe around like a boomerang. The axe can be avoided and run from. Uh, so try not to take damage from that Dax, it'll take you down about 3 quarters health right off the top. And if he starts popping AoE simultaneously, that person's going to die fairly quickly. So avoid the Axe as much as possible. I know people are going to get hit, it's a game, it happens. But um, try to mitigate damage as possible. If you do get hit by the Axe and you have a healing potion available and you're not a healer, use it. You know, um, that's why these things are available to you guys, is to help. Um, Healers aren't all empowered people. <laughs> we do have our limitations as well. So if you have a healing potion, please use it. Uh, please use any defensive heals that you can when possible, especially in fights like this. All right, so during this fight, he's going to do this AoE thing, and these little red orbs are going to pop up, or yellow orbs, excuse me. Everybody needs to run to a yellow orb and take the debuff or help remove a debuff. Uh, if you don't run to the yellow orb, you're going to be frozen into place and you will die. Uh, it's pretty simple. You'll stand there like a frozen popsicle until you're dead. And there's no point for the healer to even keep you alive because you cannot get out of that state until the end of the fight. So we just let you die. There's no point in it. So we run to the yellow orbs, get the debuff, and run back to the cliff. I usually choose not to run back to the cliff. I usually play dodgeball with the axe. And everybody wants the tanks always say stand on the cliff, stand on the cliff. You want to hit by the axe. But usually he throws the axe right prior to or just after the AoE section while you're trying to get these stupid orbs anyway. So it's inevitable somebody's going to take an axe hit. Um, and then it's a tank and spank from there. You just just run, grab the orb, run back, avoid the axe, kill the boss. Uh, it has a lengthy dialogue sequence before at the beginning and at the end. But overall, it's not a difficult fight, but again, um, it can be a long fight uh, if, and a lot of wiping if people don't follow the mechanics well. So be mindful of the mechanics of the fight and it is fairly simple after that. I hope you enjoyed the video. 
Uh, the next one coming up, I can't remember the name of the dungeon, I'm going to do... I haven't quite done it yet, I am level 52 and ready to enter that dungeon, but uh, I'm going to watch to see if I can find some videos online somewhere to teach me how to do the dungeon, because people, much like World of Warcraft, you tell them you've never been to a dungeon before, it will drop group immediately, and that sucks because you got to learn how to do it sometime. So I'll talk to you guys later, thanks for watching.